Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog. And again, I know I'm not in the Venom Vlog room. I'm just here at my computer checking out all this news from How the Reporter and everything that's been going on. Um, we did the Morbius episode I just recorded a minute ago. So hopefully that episode, obviously it'll be up by now. And hopefully this one, you didn't have to wait too long for this one. Uh, hopefully not more than like a day at the most, you know, because I'm trying to get these out as fast as I can because I have a busy work schedule all weekend. So, uh, so yeah, hopefully you guys are enjoying these. And uh, this information is pretty crazy because I actually did record a video that talks about Jamie Foxx coming back as Electro, and I just figured I'd scrap it because it you know, wasn't that long of a video anyway, and now I can combine that topic with Doctor Strange coming back because I think the two might actually be related. Um, as you guys know, like last week or a couple days ago, we got information you know, saying that Jamie Foxx was gonna come back in Spider-Man 3 as Electro. And even Jamie Foxx posted something on his Instagram saying he was coming back and that he wasn't going to be blue this time. Um, and then there was like an image he showed that showed like a kind of a redesign of the character. But I don't think that's like the official movie design of him. I think it was just some artist rendition of him. But still, it was like, you know, it's kind of exciting because, you know, I got to say the look of Mysterio was my favorite thing about uh, Far From Home. Like my favorite thing about um, the, you know, was, I can't even remember the names of these movies. Uh, the, the first Spider-Man movie, Far From Home. No, Far From Home was the second one. Uh, the first one was called Homecoming, right? So the first one had, uh, you know, the vulture in it, played by Michael Keaton, and he was my favorite part of that movie. And I like Tom Holland. He's a great Spider-Man. But everything else in that movie, I was just kind of like meh about. Same thing with Far From Home. I liked, you know, uh, Mysterio in it, and he looked amazing. And I liked Tom Holland as Spider-Man. And then everything else, I was just kind of like, eh. And I was, it's kind of predictable. But, uh, but I still was excited about that ending, about where Peter Parker goes from here. His identity has just been revealed to the whole world uh, right as he gets the girl, right as his life is starting to you know, come into focus and he's starting to grow into his own. His, his world gets turned upside down instantly in a post-credit scene where his, you know, his identity gets revealed by a Mysterio who revealed it post-death uh, because the tinkerer or whoever uploaded the video that he recorded revealing his identity. So, uh, so that's pretty crazy and that's pretty intense. So now we have his identity revealed and that's, you know, kind of similar in the comic books when Spider-Man's identity got revealed during um, Civil War. Doctor Strange was the one that helped him cover it back up. He actually cast a spell on everybody in the world to make them forget that Peter Parker was Spider-Man. Um, so I'm not saying that's what's going to happen here, but I think Doctor Strange now, you know, Benedict Cumberbatch has been officially revealed that he's in this and that they're going to start filming again because they filmed a little bit of Spider-Man 3 before COVID started in New York. I guess they're going to start filming again, or, you know, some in New York and like, you know, or something like that. And I think maybe in Atlanta too, but now they're going back to Atlanta to film some more stuff for the movie and they announced Benedict Cumberbatch is going to be showing up as Doctor Strange and that Jamie Foxx is going to show up as Electro and people are like but wait is he the Electro from the Andrew Garfield movies because there's so many fans out there especially since the Spider-Verse movie came out they all want their favorite Spider-Man like Sam Raimi fans want the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man to come back Andrew Garfield fans want Andrew Garfield to come back and I got to be honest with you it's a good idea like honestly why not have your cake and eat it too and make a billion dollars while you're at it. If you literally put all those guys coming back to play older versions of Spider-Man um, in, a, in a couple sequences in the movie, it's genius. That's why Flash is trying to shove 10 Batman into their movie is because it's a genius idea. And Spider-Man and Batman have always been those two characters that A, have had the best rogues gallery in comics, in my opinion, uh, but two, have that, that status where I always saw them as James Bond franchises where you can just change out the character, you know, with the change out the actor every other movie if you want and just to tell new stories. It doesn't matter whether you share continuity or not. I always saw those two franchises as James Bond franchises, but since the studios didn't and there's actually different multiverses of these characters, why not put them all in a movie? I think that's a genius idea and I think that is going to just make you make a billion dollars at the box office. And obviously Sony and uh, Disney would love the idea of making a billion dollars right now because everyone's broke because they can't release any movies. So the idea of a billion dollar profit is really nice to them. So if they can figure out a way to do this and set that multiverse up and, and lay the breadcrumbs of it here in Spider-Man, which will then set up Doctor Strange, it'll then get people who really like this Spider-Man movie with the multiverse involved. You know, it'll get them to go see Doctor Strange because Doctor Strange, I think the first one did pretty well, but they obviously want every Marvel movie to try to make a billion dollars from here on out if they can. And, uh, and so that's a good way to do it is set something up in Spider-Man, 
put Toby in there, put Andrew Garfield in there, put Jamie Foxx in there, put Alfred Molino in there, like whatever you want to do. Just do, well, I guess he died, but whatever. Put them all in there. Who cares? That would be great to see a scene where, you know, like Tom Holland goes like, is there is there any reality where things go well for me, where I'm actually happy? And then you you show like Tobe Maguire and, uh, and Kirsten Dunst, you know, happily married with two kids and they're older and they're sitting on a couch in a house and they're they're all together and they have kids like that would be awesome like it's just something simple it's a great cameo and it, it has weight to it and it, it gives you hope you know and it gives the the character hope that you know he can you know press on through ever whatever he's going through in this storyline and so i'm excited so jamie fox coming back as electro not blue electro just regular electro i guess or with a new costume new design probably and then now benedict cumberbatch as dr strange like and they're going they're going to start filming like next week in in atlanta so what do you guys think are you excited to learn more about the spider-man movie i gotta say i wasn't a big fan of homecoming i actually it's uh, i like it more than the andrew garfield movies that's not on andrew garfield though i thought he was a fine spider-man but i just didn't like those movies too much but uh but i liked homecoming a little bit more than those but not as much as the sam raimi movies but uh but but so they were kind of a middle ground for me but then far from home came out i was like you know what and after even rewatching it a couple months ago during COVID, like during the the peak of COVID at the beginning of the year, um, I really was like, "Hey, this isn't that bad. Actually, it's not as bad as I remember." Because in the theater, I was kind of mad on it. It's a little above math for me, and I think that's mainly because Jake Gyllenhaal killed it as Mysterio, and he looked so comic accurate that it was amazing that they went that route with him. So I would love to see them go that route with Electro, see him in a green suit with a big, you know, some version of a a white electricity or a, a yellow electricity coming bolts, you know, coming off his face, whatever they do. I'm not, I'm all for it. I think it'd be great. It'd be a good way to set up the sinister six is make villains from alternate dimensions, alternate realities. That's a quick way to build a team of six. Uh, then that's also bringing in the spider verse. I mean, that kind of sets you up to tie into the cartoon movie universe. If you wanted to like, that's how crazy is that? Like, <laughs> like, uh, I don't know. It just, it, whatever, you know, Sony is doing, and it's funny because everyone keeps saying like, oh, you know, like the multiverse talks. Like it's we're going to get sick of it, I, I promise you. But if Spider-Man comes out first with it and they get, you know, a multiverse, because they already did it with Miles, right? But that was a cartoon movie. And although it didn't do that well at the box office, it did win an Academy Award. So there is interest in that idea and that concept. So if they do that here in live action and we somehow get like, I don't know, maybe Doctor Strange just shows up and does the civil, you know, the one more day thing and uses his magic and makes the world forget Peter Parker Spider-Man. I think that's too easy of a solution, and I hope they don't go that route. Um, but, you know, and plus I don't want to think about one more day when I see this movie. Uh, so if, if they're bringing Doctor Strange in to do something multiverse-related and set that up, that I will be very interested in. If it's just him coming in to, you know, cast a spell on everyone so they forget i'm like nah that's too easy like you got to have spider-man struggle for a while with his identity being out there you know so we'll see where they go with that but i'm still intrigued and i gotta say like after the way that last movie ended that was my favorite part of that last movie that's what made me remember far from home because it was mostly forgettable except jake gyllenhaal but after i saw that they were like oh his identity is revealed i was like oh what what that's a spider-man movie we have not gotten yet that's a story we have not told in the live action movies so I'm excited for it. So that's why I really hope they sink their teeth into it, embrace it, and use that to maybe build up the Sinister Six. And maybe the, the Sinister Six can be brought in almost like the Thunderbolts, where it's like, hey, let's get these six aggressive, evil, super-powered people, and let's make them like let's make the world think they're heroes like they did Mysterio, and let's sick them on Spider-Man. So then they're justified in a way for trying to track this guy down and kill him because it looks like Spider-Man has you know, uh, led to the death of, uh, of Jake Gyllenhaal's character, you know, Quentin Beck, um, Mysterio, who, you know, people were loving him for a while. And then he was also kind of an Iron Man, Doctor Strange knockoff guy anyway, which is kind of cool, but he used visual effects and, and special effects and stuff and stop, instead of like what, uh, you know, Doctor Strange uses real magic. So I'm curious, maybe Doctor Strange finds out that Mysterio's still alive. Maybe he can see through the, the, the haze or whatever, you know, is going on. So I, I'm, I don't know, I'm intrigued. And remember in the comic books, there was a version of Mysterio that uh, is, you know, hops dimensions. Quentin Beck from the main 616 universe in the comics, 
he did dip into the Ultimate Universe and redisguise himself as a different version of Mysterio in a comic book called Spider Men, where Peter Parker meets Miles Morales from a di- from the other Ultimate Dimension. So there's still that possibility. Maybe you know Quentin Beck actually knows some kind of dark arts. Maybe someone on Doctor Strange's side, um, you know, maybe he was a student at one point. I don't know. We'll see. So I'm curious. I have a million ideas, and I- I'm sure you guys too. So. Let me know what you think of Jamie Foxx coming back as Electro. Let me know what you think of uh, Benedict Cumberbatch joining the movie as, uh, I guess they called him a father figure slash mentor. I agree. I hate that. Like they did that in the last movie. They had like Nick Fury and Happy Hogan kind of fill the role of Tony Stark because Tony Stark had that role in the first one. I think we just have to accept that in this Marvel Universe, they're like, hey, we have Spider-Man in the Marvel Universe. We want to utilize that. We don't want him just running around by himself. I was kind of hoping this third movie they would and they would kind of start breaking from the Marvel Universe and get him into that Venom verse, you know, and get him over that way. They can still do that, but it makes sense that they would put a, a Doctor Strange in here because I think after this movie, Marvel only can use Spider-Man one more time, um, you know, t- until they have to renegotiate more deals, I think. And I'm sure they're going to want to save him for for, you know, for the next Avengers movie or something like that because a lot of people were speculating that he was going to show up in Doctor Strange now you can you don't have to do that. You can have Doctor Strange focus on telling his story and not have Spider-Man cameo in his movie, but have him cameo in Spider-Man's movie. And I think that's awesome. Uh, so we'll see. We'll see where this goes. But I'm excited. Uh, this actually making me take more of an interest in this Spider-Man movie and the fact that they're doing the Spider-Verse stuff. And like I said, there's we're gonna get sick of it. Eventually, we're gonna get sick of multiverse stuff because we had you know they already kind of did it in. Well, they've been doing it on the CW shows for a while, and obviously they've been doing it in comics for years. But as far as like mainstream stuff, like Spider-Verse was kind of put a, uh, a little staple on that. Like, hey, we, we are crossing universes and we want to do that. Even though Supernatural did it and Buffy, like all these shows do it, right? Um, Sliders was like kind of that, you know. But I'm just like talking about modern day and, and things like that and into these comic book universes. Um, I think CW and Spider-Verse were kind of like kind of pioneered that a little bit, you know. And, uh, you know, as far as like the newer stuff, like I said, there's a million examples of multiverse stuff in the past. I'm not saying those don't exist. I'm just talking about newer audiences and what they're getting into. But Spider-Verse doing that, now making it Spider-Man, I now if they get this movie out by next year, which they're saying they're going to try to get Spider-Man out uh, Christmas of 2021, if that actually happens and it has multiple Spider-Man in it, like I said, we don't know right now. We just are theorizing that, you know, Doctor Strange is here for multiverse reasons. And Jamie Foxx may be from a multiverse, you know, villain. He may be, a, you know, the, you know the, the version from Electro from the Garfield movies. If that's the case and we see Garfield and Toby, if they do that in this movie, they will be a few years ahead of DC with Flash. You know, they'll be like a, a year or two ahead of him. And, uh, and that will be good for them because then people will go like, oh, like, the you know, masses will go, oh, you're just copying off Spider-Man now, you know, like, and, and that's what Marvel want, Marvel and DC are in this race, like, you know, at first it was like, let's race to make a big team movie and build our team, and so Avengers did that, and then DC tried to do that with Justice League, but, uh, but they, you know, so Marvel kind of won that race, now the next race is to the multiverse, and even though DC had a good head start on it at first, especially with the CW shows and the crossovers and having, um, you know, Ezra Miller Flash show up on the, the DC Crisis on Infinite Earths uh, TV show on the CW, like, that was smart. It was good, but they're taking too long to get that movie out. And if they're going to throw four Batman in it, I think four or five Spider-Man in a Spider-Man movie live action, I think that's going to just turn a lot more heads, I think. Um, but you guys let me know if you agree with me, disagree with me. But I can tell you right now, the race is on. Who's going to do it? Is it going to be Marvel? Is it going to be DC? Marvel seems to have a heads up right now. If they start filming next week in Atlanta and all goes well and it doesn't get pushed back, then if they can get all their footage, they will they will beat Flash because Flash hasn't even started filming yet. So, uh, so yeah, who knows? We'll see what happens. Uh, but I want to hear your thoughts. Are you excited for any of this news or you hate all this news? Let me know down below and we'll continue our conversation down there. Thanks so much for watching the show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you in the future. Peace.